Now, those who don't know you, all three people out there, uh, you are the John M. Olin Distinguished Professor of Economics at George Mason. Yes. We know you as a syndicated columnist, author, numerous books, essays, and so forth. You're a libertarian slash classical liberal, I would say. Yeah, that's fairly good. Is that about right? Yes. Uh -huh. And, of course, you write for Town Hall, World Net Daily, Jewish World Review, hundreds of newspapers across America. Well, let's jump right into this. Let's start with fundamentals. Let's start with the basics. How would you define liberty? Well, I defined it as, as uh, people being able to engage in peaceable, voluntary exchange without interference by others. And, and typically, down through mankind's history, uh, liberty is not the normal state of affairs. Uh, that is, throughout mankind's history, he's been subject to arbitrary abuse and control by others. And so that is, they can use liberty to destroy liberty. They can use the, if you look at, if you look at uh, totalitarians around the world, they always start out, they are for, for free speech. That is because they need free speech to get their foot in the door. But after their foot is in the door, they want to eliminate uh, free speech. And you see this all over the country. You all see all this. So, uh, so, so again, I think that we have to be very, very concerned because we're losing our liberty. And, and, if, and, and if you ask the question, which way are we moving, tiny steps at a time, are we headed towards more personal liberty or towards more government control over our lives? It'd have to be unambiguously the latter. And what's interesting about that, too, is it's defined as compassionate. So yeah. in other words, using government the law, the power of government, to take something from someone and give it to somebody else, or to take something from a generation that's not yet born. You know, we have over $200 trillion in unfunded liabilities, $21 trillion in fiscal operating debt. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a trillion dollar deficit this year. Mm -hmm. They just voted one of the mo most massive budgets in American history. The Republicans did. The president signed it. Three generations from now, two generations from now, those kids are going to have to deal with this. So even when it comes to their own children and grandchildren, do you think parents who love their children and grandchildren, do you think they delude themselves into thinking, well, that's them, that's, a, that's this ambiguous future generation, my kids will be fine? What's the mindset there? Well, well I, I think here's the problem is that the big collapse will not come until 2030 or 2040. And any congressman who will take steps now to prevent the big collapse, he's going to be thrown out of office. That is, the, the major big problem in our, in our spending is Social Security and Medicare. Any congressman talking about doing something about Social Security, doing something about Medicare, he's going to be run out of office and by, by the people who are over 65. So what happens to a country? It, well, if it, uh, people will say, well, well, what can we do? And I ask, well... Uh, are the American people, as human beings, are we any different from the Spanish, the Portuguese, the French, the British, great empires of the past who went down the tubes for doing roughly what we're doing, bread and circuses? And I say, well, maybe we're not that different, and maybe uh, the, uh, we, we're going to share the same future as those other great empires of the past. Keep in mind, we have betrayed the founding fathers of our country. I mean, if you look at Federalist Paper 45, when James Mad Madison was writing Federalist Paper 45, he was trying to convince the citizens of New York to ratify the Constitution. And they were afraid to ratify the Constitution. And he said, the powers that we've delegated to the federal government are few and well-defined and restricted mostly to external affairs. The powers left with the people in the state are indefinite and numerous. If you turn that upside down, we have what we have now. The powers of the federal government are indefinite and numerous. Well, we're moving towards totalitarianism. That is, I'm not saying that we're a totalitarian nation yet, but which way are we headed? Tiny steps at a time. More government control over our lives or more liberty, and it's, a, and it's the latter, more government control over our lives. And so, and, and, and the tragic thing about this is that the American people have contempt for the United States Constitution. Contempt and ignorance, because any politician who decided to 
uphold and defend the United States Constitution, he would not get elected to 